Uh, check, check. Okay, you guys now can hear me, but can't see me. I'm not sure what's going on with the computer today. Bear with me. I try to figure this out. What's going on here, man? Sorry, guys, and two are my viewers. Um, I really don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just too tired to actually take a shot at the video. Check, 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 check. You guys can hear me. Send this over. Check, check. Welcome back to Cannabis of Canada with Jason Wilcox. Hopefully this is working. Uh, what a horrible start. That was probably the worst start in probably five years for me or six years now since I've had such a notorious, notorious start. That was two hours of messing up my programming. I still don't know what's going on, but you know who knows? Maybe my computer needs to be swept out or something. But... Um, According to everything I see, I'm assuming I'm online, and we're going to be talking a lot about. Uh, today was supposed to be a really serious show, uh, believe it or not. I got to go pick Vicky up at the airport at four o'clock, so today was supposed to be a much longer and more serious show. Um, after some talks with some pretty high-profile people in the community that are interested in and looking at different things that we might or might not be able to do legally speaking about uh, Bill C-45 and the Cannabis Act itself. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'm coming through here. I'm gonna double check my mics. I'm gonna get on to YouTube here for people. Yeah, I'm really, I apologize for all the screw ups in the start guys, one of those days. But uh, last weekend's cup was amazing. It was uh, really good to be there. I do not know if my sound is even working. Hmm. I don't know how to do this. So while people tune in, just uh, bear with me for a sec here while I try to find my find my own show. Okay, at least the audio is working. I can see the comments. I think we're actually good now. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's do this for real. Um. I gotta wake the fuck up. I've been dabbing out. So I'm still dabbing out from the the uh. The Mid Island Cup, you know, it's, uh, I took some pictures and, well, that's just all the top. Yeah. But I took a whole ton of pictures and, and there's still a whole bag of, of samples here um, that uh, I still haven't got. Uh, not samples, but when you're when you're judging, you got to judge, of course, all the stuff. Um, no, I have to admittedly have some of the topical things uh, or edibles I don't eat together with But sorry. There we go. There's a few of them anyway that are left over. But uh, just like any comp, you know, you got this, then you got your, your papers. You got your kind of visual right off the hop. Um, and, and there's a lot that people can tell. Now, I heard a lot of discussions about scope your dope, don't scope your dope. Um, you know, in a competition, my own opinion, I've been judging competition since treating yourself in Toronto. Uh, my own opinion, you need to break out a scope. And you need to look because a, a great burning bud, just because it burns great and gets you high, doesn't mean that it should pass a competition of contestors. Contestors would not have mites or mold on their on their cannabis. Two of the easiest things to spot with a microscope. There's other bugs and there's other things you can spot, but those are the two fundamental. It's not to knock it. It's not to knock that that person into the ground for having it. It's a it's a common occurrence. It, it's more the fact that it happens almost in all of our foods. Our bread goes moldy on a regular basis, like Mr. Chusaw brought up in court. You know, what do you do with your moldy bread? You throw it in the garbage. Well, if you mold the weed, you're going to do the same thing. But mildew and stuff like that could be very hard to spot. It's also very hard, to, or it's very easy for people to clean up. 
So for that reason, I seen the discussion online. I didn't weigh in. Um, I've judged enough competitions. I don't need to justify. I was one of the first people using the scope in, in competition many, many moons ago when I knew to look at, look, look at these things and to also look at the, at the, uh, at the plant matter itself um, and actually see, is there any residuals from sprays? You know, have these plants been sprayed with anything? Yeah. For coffee? Yes. Justin McLeod, your tickets are going in the mail today, uh, overnight. Um, he won our last show. Um, as well, can this? Can somebody please share this around into um, the Cannabis Canada group? And uh, yeah, Cannabis Canada. Hey, what? Oh, how? Wow. Sitting here in shock, live on the air. Shocked on my own fucking show. Excuse my language, but fuck me. All right. It has not been easy. You don't know this shit, and you're freaking tired of shit. Um, maybe it's just that my freaking... My system's down. Anyway, the only good thing is uh, Vicky's coming back into town today, as I mentioned. And um, we do have a few different videos to play and a few different things, uh, takeaways from... Uh, from the weekend, I'm gonna keep smoking on this shatter. Some of this turp sauce. Um, uh, some of the turp. I mean, again, the entries in this year's competition. People can take shots at grassroots. I've seen some people that were taking shots. Um, I don't know them personally, so I'm not gonna go after them or or bang on anybody. Everybody has a right to their opinion, but to suggest that the 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 entries were were garbage or that everything was just shit thrown in there just to make it look like a cup um that's really really negative really really sad to see somebody stating that especially when that person likely wasn't even at the event having judged again numerous competitions from treating yourself to here from california to australia i've done it i've done it that's my that's my issue that I have, I guess, with uh, with people just out uh, shooting down a cup like grassroots, which is really craft is building in Canada. People are starting to realize it's not about medical and, and recreational. It's they've been merged together into this craft. You're either craft or you're LP. So a craft coalition it could be built. Not something I'm going to head up. That's for sure. But I'll certainly support the leader, whoever the president is, whoever the person is that's that's uh, leading the charge. I'll definitely support that. Um, but what we do know is that the, the the positioning of politicians now that they're digging more into cannabis and they're learning more about cannabis, about cannabinoids, about the endogenous system, the more that they're actually looking to <clears throat> seemingly. I don't know. To me, it looks like. There's there's just a lot of work. It, it, they will allow craft. I believe that we as a free and democratic people can democratically and and peacefully and just justifiably kick their ass in court like we did in Allard, kick their ass through political means. Now we can't lobby because they they got too much money. So they're already paying for the lobbyists to write all these stupid policies, such as you're all non medical users. You know what you really are? You're cattle that they can tax because they can't tax medical. That's what this is all about. Taxation and, you know, monopolization of Canada versus we the people, the free and democratic people. They work for us. We don't work for them. I'm glad I learned to be a patriot as a kid because I would go to war for my country in a second. I would do a lot of different things. Um, you know, and uh, and right now what's going on and, and what we see is, is a more suppression. We see reefer madness 2.0. We see uh, jail terms that have been, in some cases, doubled and tripled for people that grow and sell. Um, so trying to kill the craft cannabis market, you see, people have been trying to kill cannabis in B.C. since the forest industry died. Without cannabis, B.C. wouldn't have survived. Cannabis built this province. When the forest industry went down, many, many towns still survive up in the mountains off just cannabis. 
And without that market, that ability to, to feed your family, you're being suppressed and, suppressed and oppressed over your choice of medicine or non-medical weed, whatever that is. It's your choice. I was really disturbed, and I want to get into this. I'm going to get into this deep because we're also going to show the CMA, the Canadian Medical Protective Association's uh, position paper. It's their agenda. It's what they plan to do with the medical program, which is abolish it. So all you guys out there building your big rooms for your 99 and 200 plant counts, like, you know, I, I believe me, I get it. I've been at this since the, the inception of the program. I get it. But you're going to be building out, spending all your money on these rooms, only to have be told in, in a couple of years that you're not eligible to have it anymore. The new ACMPR permits, if you guys read the language in them carefully, nothing is guaranteed for you for the rest of life. The fact that you can grow cannabis is not guaranteed for the rest of your life. In fact, it is a one-year prescription that expires. Upon expiring, they don't have to renew. It's the federal government of Canada. I don't mean to be Debbie Downer, but this is the realistic shit that we have to be prepared to potentially raise a craft cannabis coalition. Because it's not just about medical. You see, we got to take it away from the medical only because the government, in their language, their very own documents say non-medical users. Now, if they had said recreational, it probably would have been a little smarter because recreational could be argued to be medical. Sort of like having a, a pet. You know, having a pet's considered medical. How it's therapeutic, um, man. All I all I know is that I, right now people are continuing to rely on craft. They're not worried about the laws, and I I don't think they were worried too much about the laws before. Aside from driving, these driving laws are pretty serious um, um, based on pseudoscience. However, the issue of supply and distribution. I believe that politicians, and please, any law politicians or friends of politicians, point people to our educational shows, point people to our speakers, to our seminars, where it's not a bunch of doctors in suits and a bunch of people that just learned in, in school out of a book about something called cannabis. And all of a sudden, they're experts. World-renowned. That's the kind of stuff that has to stop. We have to make sure that we get uh, people out there understanding the grassroots, understanding this is, again. What me? I went to a few cups: the Mid Island Cup, the Mom Cup, the the uh, um, now this cup here, the uh, Grassroots Cup. Most importantly, what I've seen in all three of them was our culture. What's left of it? It's been picked apart pretty good. Whoever's job it was to dismantle the the uh, the uh, cannabis culture as best they could. Just in a regular. What? I'm telling him he'll have to pick the events. Justin, if you're watching, you're going to have to pick the, just forget it. Uh, you're going to have to pick the tickets up uh, at the door. It's the $30 for us to mail them overnight at this point and try and get them to you. I'd rather have them with me at the door and you'll know that you'll be able to get them. Oh, sorry for switching gears again. It's one of those things where you just got to flow with it. This place looks like a disaster zone. Oh, man. All right. I'm killing myself here on this one. Anyway, I'm going to take a bit of a break here and try and recompose myself. Um, I'm going to show the award ceremony from Grassroots first. Um, Beard Brothers, I was proud to say, our collective once again, three more trophies um, to add to the collection. So I'm going to play that, and then I'm going to uh, play last year's, or, or two years ago when we were at the Burning Cup, because that's what's coming up this weekend. And, um, yeah gonna be like the day after my birthday so it's kind of cool but anyway here's the award ceremony from last weekend and give me a chance to recompose and get myself together thanks
go to court and seek a constitutional declaration in relation to one aspect of the regs, seems to me we may as well challenge the other ones too. We look forward to bringing you law and grow rooms as we continue to usher in legalization. We took down the federal government's attempt to ban home growing in the country of Canada. Thank everyone, thank you, it's huge. Um, coming from Toronto, it's, uh, it's a different world out there. It's, it's really, you've, all, you've probably seen it in the news, 
since what they call Project Claudia, uh, there's been, uh, it's been a game changer. There was an exponential growth in the city. We went from, uh, you know, just over 20 something clubs to well over 100 in, in, in a fast amount of time from the beginning of this year. And they shut all the clubs down, majority of them. Now, every patient's misplaced. We're living in a bit of fear and looking at court challenges all the time. A lot of my friends are currently going through the courts, many of them reopening. In essence, it's separated, I like to say, the men from the boys, the real fighters, and it's still a war. It's still a war. The, the, the battle lines have changed. We have businesses, and it's, uh, it's corporate. The, our enemies now, they have a lot of money, more money than us, and uh, it's difficult. So if we get organized, we work together, and we have more events like this, raise money, and have it move in the right in the right way. So we're all moving as a unit to advance our mission. Because legalization is around the corner, and if we all work together, we can define what it looks like for all of us. So thank you for supporting the coalition, and we look forward to working with you. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Jason Wilcox. He's the reason why we're all here and we'll have plants in our gardens. Um, for those that don't know him, you guys should. Jason Wilcox. Woo! Right on. Thank you, everybody. Um, wow. Uh, this is Liberty. This is what we fought for in Allard. I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell a story about a grower in a David versus Goliath fight. And uh, really this goes back to 2012 when uh, the government came in with uh, basically a Hitler solution, an end-all solution for Canada was to take away personal home growing and to take away the ability for a caregiver to grow for medical patients. Thereby allowing a monopoly of large corporations to sell through Shoppers Drug Mart. Your persons like yourselves when we legalize. Anyway, long story short, we challenged this in 2012 with Mr. Conroy. And if it wasn't for people, Justin is right here, he's a very humble man. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but John Conroy, you need $10,000 when you have lawyers. Is a, a quarter million dollar engagement. So when we hit the $6,000 mark, I was tapped out. I was I'm not a rich man, I'm a patient. So, you know, I went to my friends and Justin, he threw a Hail Mary with me. He threw the money up that we needed to secure John, who later secured the injunction, later beat the government. Remember, injunctions are restraining order. So what this coalition did, and what these group of patients did, was restrain the federal government of Canada, put them on trial. And after we put them on trial, we actually beat them uncontested, meaning they never, you understand, a federal trial is always appealed. The federal government never appealed us. We beat them uncontested, and we get some of our money back. Woo! Honestly, guys, everything we fought for, my dream was to see what I see in this room, our culture, and the freedom of the plant. Because what comes, everything comes from the soil to the oil, that's what's in this room. We represent the cannabis culture. The people who came in and tried to buy this and take this from us, tried to take the plants from the patients first and from you later. We stopped that. The plants are back with the patients, the genetics are with the people, and now this industry can explode. As we see with Green Planet, as we see with everybody, OK Garden Supply, we've got dispensaries here. And is there a war? Yes. I hate using words like war. My war for my garden is over. I'm now going back to you know, peacefully growing what I'm able to grow. You know, but now we need to fight something called the legal supply. You know, there's a lot of issues out there that stand facing Canadians. And for some of us, it's not gonna matter. You know, you're gonna be okay going to shop the drug market and cannabis. And I always said, who doesn't love the neighborhood grower? And that's what I said at 420, two years ago. It's what I say now. And as we legalize in the federal government, this is, this is what I want you guys to understand. The legal task force is looking at one ounce per adult and potentially no growing. And if the government came out with such an asinine approach to legalization, everybody in this room would immediately be a convert to medical. You would have a bomb knee and you would get a prescription <laughs> as a medical patient so that you could grow. That's the problem with the two-tier solution. I think the federal government's in a lot of trouble. I'm not here to rant and rave a lot of the politics that go with this. At the end of the day, what happened from 2012 to 2016, medical patients in Canada rose up 
with their sponsors, with their supporters, many who are in this room, and took down the federal government of Canada in a $786,000 case to secure the constitutional option for a regulatory option for all of us to grow in this country one day. Right now, one million, like Health Canada's own estimates, one million medical marijuana patients can order their tents and their supplies right now, download their papers, and start growing as a result of everything this coalition did. Woo! And everybody Woo! Woo! I love you all, and thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you do. Just goes to show you, uh, you know, how much power there is in people and just a small group of people, you never know what you can do. It's something to live by. And, uh, Darn right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I'm going to get a little emotional on this topic here. We brought some entertainment for you guys. are going to come and uh, hopefully shake some of these chandeliers off of here. Okay, welcome back to Cannabis Canada with Jason Wilcox. So there's a couple updates. Uh, noise out of my ear. There's a couple updates on the uh, on the events. Um, both grassroots, where Beard Brothers took three trophies. Uh, shout out, check out beardbrothers.ca. <clears throat> and then of course we've got the uh, Burning Cup coming up. This is the third cup that's happening up in Vernon, the third Okanagan Cup. And hats off to all the facilitators and 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 uh, and, and people that are are uh, are taking part to make this uh, to make this happen. And again, going back to the craft, um, a craft coalition sounds pretty cool. Um, I think that it's time that Canada, um, not just the medical patients who already knew the value of this plant, you know, but it's time that Canada says to the federal government's legislators, enough is enough with calling us non-medical users. We all have CB1 and CB2 receptor cells. We all have an endogenous system. The way cannabis goes into our body by virtue is a multivitamin at the very best because you're feeding your endocannabinoid system so you could be helping yourself without even knowing it even though you're smoking it just to get high per se and i've been saying this for years and it's time that we start to to get back to to abiding by it um i think that that's a, a very important part so um the um the other thing what else did i want to cover here Da, da, da. We do have another video to play. Um, we do have some more general admittance tickets, uh, four more actually to give away um, before we leave uh, Friday. So um, yeah, four more GP tickets to give away uh, or general admission tickets to give away. And um, and if you're interested in attending and you've never attended an, an event like this, let us know. Um, Especially if you live in the Vernon area, um, you know, there's only so many people that get out and actually um, get to these events. And somewhere, I, I, again, the, the first the first cup was amazing. It was an amazing time to be up there because we were celebrating that year. So the, the win in the, in the big finale. And, uh, and, and it just, once again, as, like I said, I just came from two other cups, three other cups this year, where I see the same thing as what we showed in that video is our culture, our people, um, but we gotta stop staying in our camps. We can't be like a bunch of tribes and then think the English aren't gonna keep splitting us up like a bunch of rats because we're not united. So it's sort of it's sort of like really history repeating itself in a host of different ways. If the cannabis culture could actually bring all these different groups together in Canada and stop saying there's a recreational or medical or there's this and there's that, and uh, stop saying you have such a big bat because the government and their cronies and corporations, they've already demonstrated who has this big bat. It's just uh, the long and short of it. Um, it really is. Anyway, good afternoon, Ian. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon, Donna. Good afternoon, Joe. Damn, a few names on here. Hey, Sam Smith's watching. Joe Warner, check it out. Um, I was good to see you, Joel, at the uh, at the event. I wish we had more time to talk, but you know how it is with these things. They just get, they just get crazy. But um, it is what it is. I uh, I look forward to uh, to the next trip over to uh, over to Victoria. I love heading over there. It it changes things up. Hey, Mike, I'm looking forward to. I got to get back out to Sudbury to visit, but um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to my next trip to Toronto. At least we got to get together. 
it uh, we keep saying this every year and then we end up missing each other. But um, we will be doing a national tour with the Coalition documentary um, in the spring, um, which will go from city to city and it will directly uh, be addressing one a screening of the of the documentary as well as uh, some guest speakers uh, from various regions and from time to time. You never know. John Conroy himself or Mr. Tusa himself just might get up on stage and, uh, and say they're part of, uh, of this historic uh, venture. And then, of course, we'll make it available on social media for everybody. And uh, hopefully other Commonwealth countries will use what we do here as a tool to stop a monopoly from taking over their country when it comes to sales and distribution of cannabis. You should at the very least be able to grow your own supply, a reasonable supply. Now we got these guys running around getting 50 gram licenses and somehow they're convincing doctors that are retiring to do it. And what that's turning out to do is give five, six, 700 plant licenses and the government don't want that. So they're gonna abolish the Canadian medical program. I know people think I'm crazy saying that. I never thought I'd be saying it, that's for damn sure. But people think I'm crazy for saying it. I was the first one to report it because I caught it in the CMA position statement, um, which really set things uh, set things forth for me. Their position uh, their position statement told me a lot. Here, 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 Anyway, you guys got any questions out there um, about the upcoming Vernon Cup? We are going to do a, uh, a, a uh, number generator and uh, give away two more tickets here. So if you're interested or if you have some friends that live in the Okanagan um, and it's a short drive for them to get up to the Vernon Cup, everybody's going to be there with their best wares. And, uh, and, and it really is a really good time and a good place to go and have a good time. Yeah, this is the thing, though. The coalition, you see, the coalition that we did here in Canada, we, we fought back with lawyers. I'm reading the comments on YouTube here. Um, I, you got to remember, we fought the federal government of Canada. We put a restraining order on them that's known as an injunction. Stops them in their tracks from doing anything else to the medical program pending the, the decision in the trial. Five years later, we got our decision. <coughs> For four years, sorry, later, we got our decision. And, um, and frankly, we kicked their ass. You know, we got seven hundred and eighty six dollars or a thousand or something like that back in damages uh, in that range. I can't remember the exact amount, but um, we had raised over three hundred thousand dollars. And um, quite frankly, the government failed to prove a single fire attributed to a, a medical grower, a, a single crime attributed to a medical grower and their garden. And nor could they really substantiate mold. Like Mr. Tussaud said, when your apple or your banana goes moldy, do you eat it? When your bread goes moldy, do you eat it? What do you do with it then? So why would cannabis be any different if we knew we had moldy cannabis, we wouldn't sit there and eat it? So it was a really weak argument, weak angle that the government came at us with, with respect to mold, because Mr. Tussaud just kind of schooled them on the on the simplicity of the, of the discussion and debate. So... So, um, yeah, I'm trying to watch both these chats here, I'm trying to get down. Um, for the uh, question on YouTube, uh, the word on the injunction right now remains. This is why I talk about this on my show. I know it gets boring and people are like, who gives a fuck about the medical program? We're legalizing. Well, yeah, but legalization and provocation in the process of monopolization presents a problem conflict of interest and in my own in my own opinion doesn't meet the the statute of the constitution of canada nor the charter of rights of freedoms by extension so the injunction is in place now i would love everybody watching to please ask yourselves why 
Would the federal government of Canada keep an injunction in place, keep themselves under a restraining order that only protects 36,000, and not lift it, not go back in front of Justice Phelan and say, Your Honor, we feel we met the constitutional validity of Allard. Can you please lift the injunction? It doesn't look honest to be under restraining order. But they're so good at muzzling it in the media that three quarters of the country or 95% of the country doesn't even know the government's under a restraining order for cannabis. Uh, hey, Mr. Lucas is watching. Hey, Phil, thanks for tuning in. Um, I ended up inviting you by accident, my friend. But I am talking about um, the, the licensed producers and uh, in, in our fear of the medical program. And I'm not sure, I'm no, I know you would be on top of this a lot more. Um, one, as my mentor, and two, as the vice president of Tilray. Um, so, and, and anybody in the chat, sir, jumping on Phil, and you'll be removed from the show. Um, Phil, the one thing we worry about is the removal of the medical program. So if there's anything at all that you could weigh in, that would be huge. Uh, based on the Canadian Medical Association's uh, position paper, which I'll pull up now, um, they've they've clearly stated five years that they they would like to phase out the two tier system into a one tier, and uh, though it'd still be a medical program, I think per se, I don't think they could ever get rid of it based on the basic knowledge that we have. That's my opinion, but my my question, I guess, would be. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't even be, I don't even know if you'd be able to speak to this. Sorry, I'm back into Facebook, jumping into here. Um, because the Canadian Medical Protective Association, or sorry, the, the Canadian Medical Association, all the doctors, you know, 85,000 doctors, whatever, 100,000 doctors we have now, their position paper is very clear on um, cannabis not really having the effects um, uh, that for medical that people say they do. And uh, we have to remember that, that, that Canada's program was birthed out of medical, um, and that's not happening right now. So there was people concerned about this, and they they would like to um, find it here. Yeah, I had it on the show the other day here. One sec. I'm going to find this on the, when I go to my next commercial break. But uh, the, the Canadian Medical Posi uh, Association, they don't want the doctors as gatekeepers. Now, Mr. Lucas, yourself and I go way back, and we can remember when the get doctors, we've been fighting this issue, saying the doctors shouldn't be the gateway to a drug that's not in their books because they called it marijuana for all these years, since 2001, since Post Parker. They called it marijuana, or they called it marijuana. Marijuana for, or the medical marijuana access regulations, marijuana for medical purposes regulations. Then when they got their butt kicked in Allard, they switched over to cannabis, which would almost suggest that they're going to put it back into pharmacopoeia, which would then once once again, would there be a need for a medical program or would four plants per person be enough? I personally believe that the, 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 the suggestion anyway by the Canadian Medical Association that they don't want to be the gatekeeper and that people should just all be happy with four plants. And if they want to treat themselves in their minds with with medical then they can in a medical fashion then they can do so so it gets very very um it gets very hard but um i do appreciate some of, some of the people tuning in we've had a few lawyers tune in in the past little bit um because i i know that the bigger powers that be understand that some of these laws that have been passed don't suit licensed producers they don't serve serve we the people they certainly don't serve liberty and justice for all. They certainly don't serve any of that stuff. Because right now there's there, there, there's a serious problem with the government's language of non-medical users. And then the Canadian Medical Association pushing for the removal of the medical program. I believe it would it'd be the plant count formulary. Um, and rightfully so to a degree. I believe that there should be reasonable limits on that, but I don't believe that four plants is reasonable. Um, and that's going to have to probably be argued in the test of the courts. So it's it's very um, it's very unfortunate because unless everybody's happy with just four plants, you know, and and that's okay too because there's, it's not like there's going to be heavy enforcement on cannabis. I think there's going to be heavy enforcement on cannabis driving. But um, I think we have to all pay attention to what's going on and um, 
the craft industry, one thing I realized is that they've invested a lot more money than I thought, and they're not going anywhere. They're going to start this gas war, and it's no good for Canada. I'm reporting on this shit. Like, I honestly don't care anymore. It's no good for us to continue this quasi war when the whole world's watching. The whole world's watching. Canada basically is being told this is legalization. This is how it's going to look. This is the way it's going to run. These are the corporations that are going to sell you cannabis. And everything you say means nothing. That's the sort of feeling that we get. And that's the sad part. Even though we got access to our plants, now they're talking, uh, you know, again, about potential removal of the ACMPR. Uh, Mr. Conroy told me the ACMPR is only temporary. I showed it on my show the other day with the Canadian Medical Association's uh, uh, um, statements um, with respect to the ACMPR, that they wanted to remove it, that they wanted to phase it out to a one-tier system. They don't want two-tier. And I believe it comes down to taxes. I keep repeating myself sometimes, but it comes down to taxes. You know, if you can't tax medical, then there's going to be no need for a medical program because then everybody can be taxed under the non-medical program. But then to suggest that there's no medical opens up a constitutional charter under liberty based on science and biology alone. I may not be a lawyer, but I believe this would be an argument if they ever tried to completely remove medical. So where do I end up with this at the end of the day? I end up with a fear that the Canadian Medical Association's pushing to maybe not fully remove the entire um, medical program, but rather remove the plant formulation, the plant counts. Like five grams is 25 plants. 20 grams is 99 plants, blah, blah, blah. That's the formulation I'm talking about. They want to wipe that out and say, no, four plants is good for all. Meanwhile, you could still have a medical platform, you know, but you're not going to need a medical license because it's legal. So if you want to use it for medical, it's like going to the herbology store. Well, if that's the case, then why are we calling it medical and not herbs? Why is it not in herbology? Why don't we take it another step down into herbology? Where it should really be, it's a plant-based medicine. So it really shouldn't be in, in just pharmaceutical. But um, that's, again, personal opinions. So there's a lot of stuff there that, um, again, is going on. And, uh, and now there's a rising of people. And it's happening from coast to coast because I get calls on it daily and, and I turn them down. I was, I was at a dinner recently and some really, really close friends of mine that I trust biggest part of my heart and they stood with us in the in the previous coalition and uh it's just it takes so much out of you and takes so much time and dedication that to be that leader to be that serve on that board of directors you have to be committed you know and it, it's not so it's not so easy to just take the government and put them on trial yeah everybody, everybody doesn't even realize that in allard you know when i tell people no in allard Nobody got charged. That's why it's Allard versus HTML. I charged the government in Canada. Then we selected 3,000 victim impact statements, and we picked four plaintiffs out of those 3,000 applicants. That's how we did it. I didn't make a good plaintiff. Talk too much shit about the government. Excuse my language. Oh, Chris, how are you doing today, my friend? We will be in touch. So I played the... Uh, Play the grassroots there. I'm just going to play a little funny video here as I remove my wallet. It's not very comfortable here. See how this works. Hopefully, this works okay. And I'm going to try and find that exact quote that I was looking for, Mr. Lucas, because it's important. Um, um, if there's going to be another coalition, don't be surprised if you see licensed producers working with craft because some of the policies and uh, like the driving laws. Chakra Fishies offered to put up money already to fight the driving laws because they're going to hurt a lot of Canadians. I never thought I'd be the one sticking up for Chucky, but whatever. You know, him and I had our differences in the past, but that's the past, and you move on. But now it's like, okay, now what's the next fight? How do we protect Canadians? What's the next thing for social justice in Canada? And that's to deal with the driving test 
make sure that gets dealt with. It also has to deal with protecting Canadians. And if I can tell you now, without people power, you either need money, which is really a powerful lobbyist that can outbid 90 companies with their lobbyists that are already lobbying the government to use words like non-medical and pass policies that do more harm than good and pass criminal sanctions that would uh, be better suited for a guy that just shot someone in the face than fucking, you know, a cannabis grower that sold some weed. It's just, I guess it's Reefer Madness 2.0 in a way, but at the same time, and I want people to understand this, legalization, these corporations have a place. These microbreweries have a place. As individuals, us being allowed to grow the plant has a place. The word reasonable needs to apply to all these aspects. The government of Canada feels four plants is reasonable for recreational users or for non-medical users, as they say, because they're going to tax the shit out of you. But anyway, non-medical users, you're going to be non-medical. And then for the other people in the ACMPR, you're going to be, going to be considered medical until they potentially remove the ACMPR, citing lack of medical evidence once again. If they did that, Again, there will be, this is why I'm saying a craft constitutional challenge is on the rise because there's a couple of things. A swipe at the coalition, or sorry, a swipe at the ACMPR would be a swipe at cannabis that cures cancer, stops MS. You know, when you stop babies from seizuring and you cure people with cancer like Rick Simpson, you can't just crush that information and you can't kill the internet. It leveled the playing field for all of us. So... Dale, man, you can use tax revenues and 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 poverty in Canada. Um, that would be fucking fabulous. Problem is, is um, medical patients shouldn't be taxed. You don't get taxed when you go pick up your prescription at the store for anything else. Why should you get taxed for medical? That's my only issue. And the federal government lying. Now the federal government, I don't see why Kraft can't. <laughs> Can't work. I mean, again, within reasonable levels, testing levels, inspections, whatever, but at a reasonable level, we would then be able to look at, okay, you're going to get more tax. In fact, there's clubs like the British Columbia Capacity Club Society that just became an LP dispensary. Woohoo. Who didn't see that one coming? Whatever. Um, that is an example of a company that was a nonprofit and because they paid their taxes, they ended up getting a big investigation and trial that came about afterwards, a hush trial that nobody really talks about. So I have an issue with taxes. Those medical patients shouldn't have been taxed, not for cannabis. And there were a nonprofit organization taxing people. But you know what? It's, it's who you know. It's not what you know. Because now, you know, uh, Hillary's done quite well for herself with Canopy Growth Corp. You know, we sent Hillary, Phil Lucas, and uh, and uh, Rael Kapler to Ottawa to represent us to say the MMPR was wrong and it was going to hurt patients. And when they came back with lucrative jobs. And um, and that's good. You know, hats off to them. But um, it, it, it was hard because it's not the to each their own, but it's not the med it's not the legalization myself fought for. Some of the, everybody has a right to opinion of what they feel legalization should look like. Um, but legalization with added criminalization, added taxation, and added um, influx in the, in the actual cost um, to ration to grow this stuff. Right now, like this here, this is being justified that the but that that the licensed producers. They have to charge you guys the same amount as a as an illegal dispensary because I don't know yet. You see, there's something called security risk. I learned it as a kid. I've been doing a lot of stupid stuff for a long time. I learned it as a kid. You go through these things, and uh, there's no differential in price until you add an illegal factor, a potential to go to jail factor. That's your overhead. Your overhead is finding the guy that's going to traffic 
for you. The guy that's going to run your product from point A to point B, the runners, you got to pay them. You got to pay the clippers. You got to pay even the growers and the dryers and the curers. You know, everybody might have their own talent doing whatever. Then now you got extraction crews and everybody else. All said, them charging us the same price, our extractors are basically meth labs. They're facing maximum time in jail. Like they, they will face serious time when the government decides to crack the whip. I'm predicting that now. But with cannabis, it costs them 10 cents a gram like it costs me to grow this. Most of them are doing it under LEDs in large quantities. Um, now, just because they're doing it in million dollar facilities because the government made them do it, so what? You can also grow just as good a cannabis in a small little tent or your basement if it's done right. But with 10 cents or $1.50 a gram, I think to myself, okay, now if I was a licensed producer, I'd be wanting to serve up $5 kick ass grams and undercut everybody. But I'm sure they all have an agreement or something that, that, that stops that from happening because I can't get my head around why they want to charge you guys as much as they do. Um, and then still try to tax you. You know, again, there's a lot of stuff going on where taxation and um, and penalization and, and criminalization of, of medical users and non-medical users, as they call them, you know, are all on the line. Every day I get in my car, man, I'm like Kurt Tussauds says in the video, he's, he tries to tell people about the driving video, we, we fart, literally cannabinoids. I mean, we, we probably haven't been under five nanograms of cannabis in, in like 10 years crazy think about that five nanograms of cannabis not a lot but you have that in your system if you're over that well then you're done so i wake up like kurt said he wakes up and he's already five nanograms because he said he hasn't went a day in years without a joint so i say the same thing and i'm thinking to myself damn i'm gonna be over this five nanogram bullshit so somebody has to challenge the test. So when I talk about Craft Coalition rising, uh, these are the other cases that could support cases. Uh, what I mean by that is the coalition set precedents and getting our money back. We got 786,000, not really back, but the lawyers got paid in full. So all the other lawyers, constitutional lawyers around the country said, holy shit, John and Kurt Tussaud just got paid a ton of money, you know? And they got the money back from the government. So it was case precedent setting that way. That's people power. If Kraft Unites brings together all the different brands that they, that they say we're illegal, but the people we serve say we're heroes and thank us down and daily. So we have to find where do we make that marker and that play so that people, one, get it to the kitchen talking table. So that when the next elections are, because I don't understand politics a lot, but I know that when elected officials realize that there's people pissed off and there's a very large number of them, they want their votes. So they're going to start speaking their language. So the sooner we start saying, stop calling us non-medical and start recognizing cannabis for its medical properties, and let's start serving it up properly to the Canadian people at its cost, which is equal to any other agricultural grown friggin' product, produce. This is growing no different than you would grow tomatoes, potatoes, freaking carrots, whatever. It's grown in the ground with soil. Produces the fruit. You take the fruit or the flower and produces essential oils like eucalyptus and everything else. Why is this any different? Because somebody in the government wrote down that it's different and they're telling all of us that it's different. And I'm saying, hell no, it ain't no different. The only difference is that we have an endogenous system that you motherfuckers don't want to recognize. So I don't know how we're going to get them to recognize or how we're going to get this to change. Uh, I really don't. Um, probably my biggest, my biggest concern. Okay, I found the remarks now in the doctor's thing. Let me just throw this up here because this is to show you guys I'm not just going bonkers. Pull this over here. 
So the, I want to show you exactly where the doctors are actually saying. You guys can look this up. It's a Canadian Medical Association physician paper. Um, it's a little bit of a long read if you have to. Um, or you can grab news outlets. Some news outlets have covered the small little grab frames of, the, of, of what their plan is because none of us see it coming. It's like a freight train. I, I can see these two trains about to collide and fucking I can't stop it. I can only tell you guys about it like I'm fucking crazy. Uh, anyway, here we go. Let's get so weird. All right, I gotta get a dab into me. I have to die. It's hard to dab and try to run the entire show, especially with split screen, because then you gotta you gotta really fuck around. I did have it right. I knew I had it right. All right. All right. Okay, I'm sending this over. You guys can now see what's going on. So what this is here is off of the uh, clip out of the media. Right? So what it says is a bad temper. I just uh, got back on the screen. Okay. A bad tempered exchange. <clears throat> At a medical cannabis conference has highlighted a strong disagreement between the medical Canadian or sorry the Canadian Medical Association CMA and some of its members on how many cannabis or how medical cannabis should be regulated when the drug becomes legal. Like I said, this is about when they become legal. This isn't about now. What what concerns me um, from here I'm gonna read down Black or uh, Blackmere said the position is based on the lack of evidence for more efficiency of cannabis for most indi most indications and lack of understanding and appropriate dosages and potential drug interactions. Most physician physicians still feel uncomfortable providing prescriptions for cannabis as a medical problem. They are asked to treat it in a way that they would never treat any other substance. It would be I can't even that word. In any other arena. Anyway, after legalization, patients who find cannabis helps with their symptoms can access the drug through the legal system. Four plants, said Blackman. No, I'm just telling you guys, remember, the legal system is only four plants. So if, we, if they would collapse the medical system, it's four plants. Anyway, said Blackmere, they can still consult with doctors and other healthcare professionals for advice, but will, require, but will not require their permission or a prescription. So no more licensing, no more applications, no more doctors visit. But those who support medical use of cannabis fear that getting rid of the sep or get rid of a separate regulated medical stream for the drug means patients who rely on it could lose access. Dr. Michael, medical director of whatever, a network of medical cannabis clinics said there are already issues with supply and demand of medical cannabis which should be um, exuberated by ending the medical screen. Uh, the strains favored by recreational users will likely be different than those by medical users with higher levels of psychoactive tetrahydrocarbonyl cannabinol THC and less and more of ca cannabinoid or cannabinoid um, CBD and without now remember they're talking about two per, that this bugs me too they're still only talking about two cannabinoids I would remind everybody there's 800 or there's 480 known cannabinoids identified cannabinoids that have not been explored not individually nor with a synergistic Anyway, and with a prescription, it is unlikely with health insurance, plans will cover the cost of cannabis. So they're actually wiping out my other theory that just maybe we'll get a cost cover. They're saying, nah, you can just stick with four plants. If you can't afford it, you can go to one of their LP systems. So there it is. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to copy this link and put this in for you guys. Um, Okay, there we go. Um, what I'll do is I'll put that link into. 
I'll put that link into the um, I'll put that link into the chat. And then you guys, if you wish to read that, copy that, save that, do whatever you want, because you know what? It's right there in black and white. It's the Canadian Medical Association's position. Now, if you want to read the position paper itself, it's long. So you're, it, it, they bury this these comments about 57 or 40 pages in. I can't remember exactly what the number was. That was good because it was a news clip that a news people had already grabbed the key point. See, this is just a little chunk like this one page that says what their true intention is so i've had people say to me stop fear mongering jason you're scaring the patients man i ain't trying to scare no patients i'm trying to freaking bring out about awareness to protect the patients as always other people are trying to protect their profits and as the senate said as at confirmation at everything as everybody has said in this country, there shouldn't be a profit before patients or a profit over patients. There should never be that. And that's the issue of having a medical program because they can't tax it, they can't really abuse it. And because they're dealing with the sick and dying of Canada, we always treat our sick and dying as, as best we can. And they come with a lot of medical rights that regular non-medical users would have. I think it's our job to report more on stuff like Dr. Sanjay Gupta, show more anecdotal science. I've got tons of it, but show more research that proves cannabis is definitely medical. And not only in circum certain circumstances, like when a child seizure. We know if it can stop a seizure, what else can it do? We've heard it beats cancer, but the government, the World Health Organization, still don't quite want to touch on it. They say we're at the tip of the iceberg, but they, they, they feel they're on to it. But we don't have a cure, per se, uh, for cancer because it's not consistent enough with enough people. We've cured lots of people with, can or with cannabis who had cancer, especially smaller, the smaller um, um, cancers when they're caught early uh, are easier to deal with with cannabis. But we have fought those back and beat them and beat them back into remission um, and beat them back completely, removed the cancer from the person. And it, that's been proven, but it hasn't been done on a steady enough basis for them to say that it's medical. So that's the that's CMA, and uh, that's, that's what their position is with us. So um, I just don't suggest people go light up their, their 10 light shows, go convert your basement into a nice 10 light show, invest 5,000 and tell the wife, hey, don't worry, hon, I got this. I'll never have to pay for cannabis again because this, this will reduce our costs. I get that. Growing your own will reduce your cost. But then if the government comes back and says, but you can only grow four plants, well, you're gonna have to grow four trees in your basement and learn how to use bonsai methodology. That's what's gonna happen. And I'm sure they'll set a height and a weight restriction on the plants soon enough that you can only grow them so big. They already tried to do that once. Remember, they removed that. I told them they never hold up in court because of the, the land races, sativas, and because of the way they grow different. One grows short, one grows tall, um, depending on how pure they are um, in genetic aspect. You know, that will determine where they go. Um, And then, of course, I'm going to do the, uh, okay, definitely getting hot up there. So this is also what I wanted to show you guys. Um, bam, bam, bam. Okay, Okanagan Cannabis Cup. This is what I was also just talking about. So feel free to have a look at the sponsors, the people on here. I'm proud to be a sponsor of this event as well um, with Cannabis to Canada. And 
And of course, we're this is all about that craft again. I want you guys to look at some of the names on here. Band, Electric Extract, Venom, Bud Empire, Skunk, Weed Maps, Jay Who, Canvas in Canada, Starbuds, OK Garden Supply, Team B Naturals, Okanaga Medicinal Society, Remo Nutrients, Maintainer Johnny, and then um, Legacy. I guess that's Legacy Prawn is TMB. Um, or all of the people there. Anyway, here's the information where to get a hold of it. It's up at Silver Star Ski Resort where you have the ability to get up on the gondola with your partner and have an amazing view of the Rockies. Um, it's really worth the ride if you have the time to get down there and you get a nice sunny day. You can see for as far as the eye can see, nothing but the tops of all the Rocky Mountains across BC. It's quite the sight. So um, stuff to look forward to. And uh, we're going to be giving tickets way for this coming up here in a, in a couple of minutes and um i gotta find myself a number down so that's a whole nother issue all right so um now i'm gonna find a number generator so we can actually give two general mission tickets out um my friends on facebook or on youtube i can't um it don't it don't put your numbers in on I know this sounds bad but don't please don't put your numbers in on YouTube it's because I can't play it back um, and when it becomes a dispute between um, who put what up where and when Facebook records all of the transactions all of the posts so if you guys give me numbers you know then we do a number once you post your numbers then we do a number generator and I can go back through that thread and I can verify 100% who won um, and I really suck with math so that's the reason I kind of do it that way it makes it as as fair as possible um, under present circumstance Holy cow. anybody else feeling this summer holy crap just kicking the shit out of me Okay, I'm uh, gonna play that one. So I'm just gonna play the. I see if this dance one will work here. This should work. My daughter just she's playing around with editing now, and she's doing a little more with the, with the company. So um, when I play this, this is really just uh, her messing around with some editing, having some fun. And I told her go ahead with some of the outtakes, and um, yeah, uh, Freddie Wap was there, and uh, that's uh, that's all I know. I don't even know who that is, to be honest. So. <laughs> I'm starting to really feel old. But um, anyway, <clears throat> here's a little uh, couple minute break. Give me a chance to have a dab, and we'll be right back to give away these tickets. Cheers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Gibbs Cycler is dirty and ugly and nasty as it looks. <coughs> I think he gets home tonight. <coughs> That's noisy in my ear. Damn. You guys see these new uh, headphones they got out? These are the ones you get, the Sony ones, I'm telling you. They're great for working out. No sweat gets in the in the things, and, and their reception for Bluetooth is fabulous. So, um, shit, with only eight people watching, I don't know whether I should give these tickets away tonight or wait and do another show tomorrow or something. Um, I don't know. See if you guys can share this around. See if we get a few more people on. We can get about 20 people on here. I'll do this giveaway. Otherwise, it's just kind of uh, <coughs> not really fair. But like I said, we got four of these <coughs> general mittens. <coughs> the only person who's not eligible to win right now is Justin McLeod because he's already won two. So congratulations to Justin. And, um, yeah. Back into my damn chat here. I'm trying to follow two chats and it's not easy. But I will get better at this. Again, we're just screwing around today. As you can see, I got the knockbox out. Um, this will be the next knockbox. So, as I said, you need about two and three quarter ounces. There's, a, but yeah, I'm not sure. It's about a quarter pound in there, just under a quarter pound um, in one of these jars. <coughs> um, no, it's about three ounces there. So I'd probably grind up the remainder of this and add it, and, and that'd be another 100, 200 uh, joints. That'll be pre-rolled and, and done so relatively fast. So. <coughs> so 
So hopefully, guys, you guys had a chance to see the Beard Brothers winning their trophies. You had a chance to see a few different things. Uh, even the crew is just out having fun. Um, it's a bunch of happy hippie shit um, and the way it should be. And our culture should be able to just celebrate and have a good time and really feel good about ourselves um, and what we're doing. And uh, and not feel like we're at this this position of, of, of I hate to say it, but battle or war, which which is commonly commonly been used previous, you know, in, in previous battles, you know, we, we would have no choice but to call it a legal battle, but to call it almost like a war because we're fighting for everything we can without bullets. You know, we're fighting legally and in a democratic way. Um, and, and it's not always easy. So it, it, it'll be interesting that if the CMA does somehow, because the doctors are split, this is what I like. There's a break, there's a break off group of the CMA that we've been monitoring. That branch off group is very, very powerful doctors. <clears throat> Some of them very senior. <clears throat> Those doctors do not <clears throat> do not agree with the Canadian Medical Association's um, position paper on the removal of the medical program and having just a one tiered system, and that if patients needed more than what four plants could provide, then they could just go to the LP dispensary down the street because they got all the best strains. Blah blah blah. You know, I think that presents a serious problem. Especially when there's problems with supply and distribution now, um, as I talk. But I, I do have Vicky coming home here. She is actually her plane set to touch down in half hour, so I better get my ass out to the airport. <coughs> or I'll have one angry Scottish woman for getting on my back. <coughs> I gotta find the number generator real quick here. <coughs> Number generator. No, I don't want to chat. chat. No, generator. Oh, shit. Usually I just pull it up and it's like the first one I, I pull up. Damn it. Aha, I found one, okay. <coughs> Enter. Between, we're going to do between 1 and 500. Let's just say I picked. Okay. okay, that's not going to work. Holy shit, this is just one fucked up show. Oh, I hope you guys are at least keeping each other active in the chat because I'm really struggling today with... Uh, He's particular. Uh, YouTube's been on fire today, so it's good to have you guys back on YouTube, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of us as we close in on fall time, uh, especially as we continue with these events. Um, we've got cups to attend for the next three months, so um, it's just going to be nonstop for, for activity here in Canada. Um, interesting that I can't see. Google never lets me down. All right. So now I found it. 
Random number generator. There we go. This is what I'm using. All right. Okay. How many people we got watching here? Ten. Start sharing this around, guys. Share it around. Like it. Um, especially if you're planning on entering a number. Don't start entering any numbers yet. Uh, to all of our friends on Facebook, um, please, uh, please understand that it's because, or sorry, on YouTube, it's the people on. Uh, it, it's a, if you post on YouTube, um, the number one won't be applied to the competition um, uh, or the giveaway. Uh, and most importantly, it, it, it's because I can't record it. And having two streams is very hard. It gets very complex when you're just trying to do a good thing and give away a couple of tickets to the Canvas Cup. So it's one of those things where we want to make sure that uh, that it's done right. And we do have two VIP tickets that I still haven't decided if I'm giving away or if I'm going to just uh, take a few more people with us. Um, we already are going up with a very large crew of about nine people. So I'm going to see how that plays out. But, um, yeah, I was going to allow a couple more minutes to see if we can get a few more people on here. Um, yeah. See if we can get a few more people on here, <clears throat> and then we can uh, we can hopefully get into the the random number generator. I didn't get a chance to really share this into Cannabis and Canada, so I'm hoping somebody has had a chance to do that into our group, as well as the uh, um, as well as the uh, the growers group, um, the international one. So uh, it, with this one here. You guys will remember this. Send it over. Uh, people, uh, I'll give it away. All right. So from four to eleven. Uh, sorry, between one and ten, I can't do it quite that easy. Screen. Let's say between one and one hundred. So, because there's only 13 people or so watching right now, it's only between 1 and 100. And I'll show you. This is just an example. If I click generate, it goes 85. If I click generate, it goes 93. If I click generate, it goes to whatever. See, it's random numbers. So, you can all pick any number. If you think that you can attend the, the Vernon Cannabis or the, the Okanagan Cannabis Cup in Vernon, and if you feel that you're able to to be able to attend that event and are interested, or if you have friends that live up in that region that you think would be interested, um, then please feel free to put in a put in a ticket. But we don't want to give tickets away that go dead. We want to make sure we get people out to these events. And uh, and this is all about keeping the crop cannabis together. Uh, I showed the logos earlier. Um, I can flip them back on real quick for you, um, or maybe I can't because I closed it already. Stupid me. Anyway, um, you guys have seen the posters and they're there. So starting now, please feel free to put forward your numbers. Um, and it's between one and one hundred, as you can see. When I click that generate button, that's going to be our winner. So if there's, you know, only, if it's only James Smith that's playing, then that presents a problem right there. Other than James, you might get, a, get yourself a free ticket to go to. Uh, uh, to go to the event I'll give a little more time Sean Stewart 47 Keep giving her guys this gives me a chance to freaking do my dabs and, and uh, Yeah, oh man. I didn't charge this pen for the drive. Sorry Vic if you're watching I didn't charge the pen for the drive, but Okay Oh come on there's gotta be more people that want to win than that come on now there's only three people out there that want to get, get potentially go to a cannabis cup or win a cannabis cup, get the opportunity to go. I mean, that's important. It's a, I mean, you're giving a number, I generate it, and, and if that person's number, whoever's the closest, is going to win these two sets of tickets to attend the Okanagan Cup. And I'm doing my thank you. Thank you, Dale. Dale, I almost need you working with me, man. Because I need somebody to remind me, Jason, just do your dog, because then you'll slow down your talking. So chill, bro. The Cups in Vernon, British Columbia. Top of the Rockies. Silver Star Ski Resort. So the, gon the gondola is actually running. I call it the gondola. You smoke weed, you go up, and when you go up that thing, it's scary as hell. But you can actually see, for as, as far as the eye can see on a clear day, 
you can see the Rockies, the tops of the Rockies. So really, really cool. Uh, Thomas, that's okay if you can't make it too. Remember that even if you can't make it, you can still go ahead. And I'm also giving time for people to come over from YouTube to my public Facebook page. I'm not on my private one, so don't look me up privately. Look for my public figure page and come on, join us and throw in your numbers. I'm giving you I give that up. I'm going to switch back here for one sec. Um, so it doesn't kill us. I don't want you guys just staring at a screen. Um, I've got two numbers so far. We've got two potential winners. Uh, is that all that we have? I mean, honestly, YouTube, it's not that hard. To, I know some of y'all just hate Facebook and you're never going to go on there, but this is going on there for the potential to win and go to the cup free, which would usually cost you a little bit of money. I'm not even sure what the regular entry is. But I mean, you go in there and you walk around and you, you dab and you dab and you dab and you dab and you dab until you can't dab no more. And that's kind of what's cool about the way these cups work. This particular one is done differently than all the other cups. Dale, do you live in BC? Shout out to Gibson Glass, Gib Cycler. <coughs> it's actually a collab. <coughs> but <coughs> or maybe no, it's his own piece because he signed this. <coughs> as dirty as it is. Oh, oh. oh that was <coughs> dirt toss from the <coughs> There was a lot of crumbling wax too in this competition. Hey Heather, how you doing? <coughs> Heather, you might be interested in this, and uh, you might know a few people that, that might be interested. Um, I wasn't able to share this into the Canvas of Canada group or anything yet. Um, I guess I could now. But <coughs> um, we're trying to give away two tickets, general admission tickets to the uh, Bernie Cup. <coughs> so uh, Justin McLeod has already won two that watches our show on a regular basis, and I believe he'll be attending. So... <coughs> <coughs> and the good thing about this is is <coughs> it's a different way of judging. It's a way of going around and really um everybody's judge. You know, so the, the VIP stuff that just covers a little bit more than what um a regular ticket would cover. Um where do I put the VIP So I've got uh like four VIP tickets and I still might give two away as we close in on the show. Um I don't think Vicky and I are going to have Two people sitting in the back of our car the whole way up the mountain. It's a hell of a long drive. But um, so don't think that it's impossible to get there because we're driving up the mountain to get there. So if you live between here and there, it's not uh, not improbable for us to be able to pick you up and drive you to the show and come back. You just have to be able to pay your own way when it comes to hotel and, and uh, food and that kind of stuff. So <coughs> hopefully everybody keeps that in mind. So I have <laughs> Sean and James at 47 and 36. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So I feel sorry for everybody else that, that is missing out. But, um, hey, to each their own. You know, it is way up in Vernon, but it is God's country up there. And unless you've been there, then you would understand. So here's the number generator. Once again, this is the first. Uh, i got to come over here, the screen. This will be the first test on it. Yeah. So good. I can't even get my mouse to work, man. You guys ever work with split screen and you're trying to pull your mouse to the next screen like this? Man. See, now it's here. Anyway, <coughs> just so once again, I'm going to click this generate button. Whatever button number shows up right above and is closest to 36 or 47 is going to win. Last chance. Anybody else want to enter a number? One, two, three. Oh, that is pretty close to those numbers. Uh, that would put Jay or Sean Stewart um, as our winner. Congratulations, Sean. Um, you are our winner at 44. You picked 47. 
I knew it was close. So it's three digits off. You're 100% our winner. I don't have to do a lot of math to figure that out. And bam, it's just that simple. Two tickets. Send your information, please, to cannabisincanada at gmail.com. Once again, that's cannabisincanada at gmail.com. Um, <coughs> oh, shit. I better go get Vicky from the airport. So, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in today and ladies. Um, when I say guys, I really mean everybody. But I, I, I've been told that some women take it have taken offense to be always saying guys. Like it's only a guy's world. And, and realistically, um, without women behind us, men, fuck, we'd be lost. So, you know, that's just my position. Um, you know, we don't necessarily, uh, yeah, it, it, it was just a weird thing. So, um, yeah, please don't take when we, when we say that as anything more than just guys and everybody, people, crowd, friends. And honestly, thanks for tuning in, the work that you do, um, the involvement that you get in. Tuning into shows like this, at least you're getting education that you're able to sit down, share at the talking table, whether that's at the local coffee shop, at the local dispensary, at the local lounge, you know, at your buddy's house, or over dinner with the family. But talking about what they're doing here in Canada with these laws, this is history happening in the in real time. On that note, this is Jason Wilcox, and I look forward to the next show where Miss Vicky Dabbs uh, should be able to attend and uh, likely will attend, and uh, we can move forward with the company and move forward with uh, locking down this fall's schedule. All said, this is Jason Wilcox signing out, wishing everybody a blessed update. Remember, always punch up, never punch down.